Hello! Hello! Welcome to Jam and Jabber. We're jamming, we're jabbering. We're gonna do it all tonight. <laughs> oh, we like to test our audio because we want to make sure you can actually hear it. So, um, sorry there for that feedback. Happen countless times where we have <sighs> yeah. gotten like yeah. 5, 10, 20 minutes in. Only discover then yeah. that uh, our audio was off. So uh, apologize for the little bit of <laughs> echo for two yeah. seconds. Echo for two seconds. Echo for two seconds. Echo for two seconds. Echo the dolphin. Oh gosh, that game. Oh my god. That game is so Why weird. didn't I not <gasps> think of dolphins? We didn't put dolphins on. Will tonight? you please start your warm up <laughs> okay. with a dolphin? Okay. Okay, and we'll explain what our our theme is for today. Because yesterday was Earth Day. Yesterday was Earth Day, and uh, Earth Day is actually like a holiday I really love to celebrate. Um, there's a few different organizations that I personally love to support. Um, I, I'm not paid by anybody to say this or anything, but I would love to highlight one organization. I know it's the day after Earth Day, but if you're looking for a company that is super legit, that actually does what they they talk about, walks the walk, not just talks the talk, because it's it's hard to like find a good company that actually to donate yeah. your money to, and it's not going to just go to some fucking CEO so they can get their third yacht and just continue to pollute the planets. Yeah. Um, but the company Four Ocean, it's the number four, and then Ocean is super legit. They're super awesome. They're really transparent on all of their social medias about all the things that they do to try to help clean the oceans. Um, you can go on their website and um, they have awesome little, little trinkets. You know, yeah. they're bracelets, there's necklaces, there's reusable um, watering uh, or uh, water bottles, uh, chairs, mm -hmm. all sorts of really cool things um, that you can get from 4Ocean and all of the proceeds goes directly into removing trash from the ocean. And all of their product is actually made from plastic that was taken from the ocean. Yes, and I have a few of their pieces, like I got a bracelet and a necklace, and I probably plan on buying more. My last purchase that I made, um, I actually got little stickers for each, because they say like, uh, each bracelet takes one pound of trash out of the, gar or out of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And my necklace got two pounds, and so I'm just, um, uh, slowly filling up my water bottle with all the different pounds of um, trash I'm remo mo removing from the ocean, which I really like. So um, that aside, uh, again, if you're just looking for a good company, just even to donate your money to, you can get a cool necklace or bracelet out, out of it too. It's cool. I really like Four Ocean. And if, or just at least follow them on their social medias, um, on Facebook, Instagram. Again, I'm not being paid to say this. I just really like their company. Yeah. Um, but while we were talking about uh, Earth Day, which I find Earth Day to be very appropriately in Taurus season, <laughs> like right at the start of Taurus season. Um, Ken and I were talking about doing like something Earth, uh, yeah. like uh, um, Earth Day themed. And Ken, uh, Ken, I, I don't know who came up with the idea. I I, I was pitching it. Uh, were you pitching this one? This, yeah. this is all yeah. Ken? Because we, we had a different idea that we were going to go with, but then I was like, you know what? Earth Day, why not? I, I'd love to do something fun for Earth Day, so uh, we we started spitballing ideas, and we we came up with uh, with this one, and we really. I can't liked remember it. who was the one who actually came up with this idea. I mean, the one idea I was pitching was uh, this one of my favorite videos. It's talking about Earth oh, yeah. Day, where you have this girl with a bow and dressed up as like a, a costume as like uh, the planet Earth, and she yeah. treats humans how humans treat the earth and it's really fucking funny yeah, yeah. definitely look it up on youtube it's certainly worth a watch uh but as we were talking we thought it'd be funny what it, well how different would the world be if humans were not the dominant species i hear this conversation all the yeah. time we talk about conservation we talk about environmentalism of just how much humans have just fucked over the planet yeah. and and not in like a place where earth wouldn't be able to live like i really dislike that narrative where people are like well the earth is gonna collapse no the earth will no. be perfectly fine yeah. we're fucked we're just creating a world where humans can't exist so keep on polluting assholes but things have been changing yeah. really rapidly so many people are like we're past this point we can never get back to fully where we were and and then people who actually sit down and do the work prove look 
Like I just yeah. saw this thing about the the coral reef. Yeah, yeah. Holy fucking shit. Yeah, it's coming back. It's legit coming back. People talk about the ozone layer, how it was fucked. You know why they don't talk about the ozone layer anymore? Because the, the hole is repaired. They yeah. fixed it. They fixed it. <laughs> they well, fucking fixed it. Something to, that they said that they never would be able to do, they fucking did. To be fair, they stopped producing Aquanet, so I think that went a long way. Aquanet, uh. <laughs> and, and, and just unlike, and, and more on like larger scales on companies. Oh, because yeah. it's the, the large billionaires that are the bigger, um, oh, huge yeah. problems when it comes to pollutants than the individuals. Yeah. Um, yeah. People saying like, well, you need to stop doing, like, you need to switch to all organics that won't make that much of a difference if you know like that's a whole different conversation for their day uh, but we might talk a little bit about that but um yes chance planet of the apes was our inspiration that um, is the child card yeah yeah so the um um we thought it'd be funny just to kind of talk about how different the world would be mm -hmm. if different animals or different species were uh, the dominant species versus humans because I've heard this conversation a lot and like you know if different species were like wow they'd actually be really much more in harmony with the planets one can hope anyway I mean I love this this aqua car that you've drawn because <laughs> dolphins are incredibly intelligent they also kind yeah. of fuck around like humans do. Oh, absolutely! Like they they love playing around with uh, pufferfish because their their poisons get them high. So they'll yeah. just yeah. fuck just for the the pleasure yeah. of having sex. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Um. So uh, wait, 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 wait. how's the song go? I, I we were just listening to Book of Mormon. Now I've got oh, turn it off Hasadiga stuck in my head. Iboi. And Hasadiga Iboi. Um, um, no, the, um... Oh, turn it off. No! Like, oh, those uh, are the only two songs we were listening to. No, 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 because I have those two songs stuck in my head. So long and thanks for all the fish. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yes. Um... I'm trying to remember the melody, how it goes. I, it, it's been so long. So long and thanks for all the fish. Oh, so right. sad it had to come to this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Oh, Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy. Uh, we got Chance in the chat. Thanks for joining us, Chance. Um, saying about uh, 15 to 25 years ago, we were afraid of reaching 8 degrees of warming. Now worse because um, it's um, worse because 3 degrees of warming. Yeah. We have been making a difference. And, and so many people think when it comes to environmentalism, we're fucked, so why even bother to try? I kinda, and that, yeah. that defeatist personality really pisses me off. Agreed. Um, because if nobody cares, then they won't even bother to try. Yeah. And if you don't even bother, then things won't get any better. But like companies like For Ocean, like other places I've seen who actually are trying are speaking a huge fucking yeah, difference. Yeah. So, anyways, speaking yeah. of fuck it all, uh, fuck humans, and let's see what <laughs> other dominant species would be better. Let's let's, let's bring the haha. -ha. <laughs> we started out a little serious, but let's 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 see. You know what what we get. We got our list of twenty, like always. I mean, it is a little heartwarming to see that dolphins will have like the same rush hour problems that we do. I love this picture that you draw. <laughs> I can't believe we did not think. We did not think about dolphins at all. You know, I don't want to start with this one. I'm going to draw up another one. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just, it, it's, it's, okay, this is a good one to start on. Okay. Because you can't just start off really hot on that uh, one. You got to build up to it. You got to build yeah, up to yeah, it. And yeah. and if we don't get to it, I will definitely okay. make sure we get back to it. Because <laughs> okay. it's a good one. It's a okay. good one. Okay. Um, but a good one to start off on, honestly. Mm-hmm. Dodos. Dodos. Okay, what if dodos were the What if dodos species? got their redemption what if, arc? What if what if the Dutch never existed is basically what we're asking. Yes. No offense to the Dutch, not saying anything against the today like there was a time where it was a delicacy in in that area, that region of the world. It was South Africa. So, was it just South Africa? No, it was shit. What island was it? It was. It was it the. Was it the Galapagos? Um, I think it no. might have been Galapagos. No. Yeah, I think you're totally right. Hmm. Sorry, it's it's in that area. I know, like Darwin was all about the dodo. Yeah, yeah, because in the Galapagos Islands, yeah, you're totally right. And he was studying them yeah. because of their weird shape, 
and how they're perfect for eating. Yes. I remember him saying that. And then people who were traveling there were like, hey, and then what do Europeans do best but um, yeah. bring things into extinction? Yeah. <laughs> Chances it's, it's um, Yeah, doomerism is, an, uh, is helping those in power. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Like, we need people to give a fuck. We really do. And uh, also says, um, all offense to the Dutch. Just kidding. <laughs> but not kidding. But kidding. But not kidding. But, wait, where do we stand? <laughs> I don't know where we stand. Well, I mean, again, it, it's it's definitely the time of people. Like, it, Yeah, it was more like the time and just the, the colonialism is... More the problem rather than a specific nationality. Yeah, it's it's fuck you to colonialism. Yeah. Were those people from um, from the Netherlands? Yes, technically, but you had colonialism happen in a lot of other places. I, I make a joke about Europeans mostly because I've studied a lot of European history and uh, especially specifically like paganism. Um, there was a, a animal called the aurochs. Mm, yeah. So when you think of Vikings uh, with the um, the horns on their helmets, because um, the early tribes, the uh, Germanic tribes and Nor- uh, Nordic people, um, they really venerated the aurochs. It's a um, type of ox that lived and roamed all over Central Europe, and uh, they were hunted to extinction. Yeah, um, because um, they they did not know how to live in harmony with the animal. And there's a lot I could say about that, but um, the dodos too were hunted to extinction just because mm-hmm. um, they were like, hmm, this is really easy. And the dodo didn't have a lot of predators. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they, they had no fear of humans. Exactly. And so we wanted to give the, the dodos a redemption arc <laughs> of like, what, what if instead they learned how to use tools and... Um, they started calling humans what they are. Piggy, 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 piggy. Oh, Can I make a long pork joke? <laughs> no. Um, okay. uh, um, oh, shit. What is it called? Um, um, fuck. My brain keeps wanting to say Grave of the, Grave of the Fireflies, but that's absolutely not oh, it. Oh, jeez. What's the movie? What's the book that you everyone was forced to read in high school about... With the conch shell and the British oh, boys. Uh, Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies. I was close with bugs. Um, <laughs> Grave of the Fireflies is a very different movie. And that's that's a different conversation for their day. I'm still depressed about that movie. Okay. I'm, I'm taking this dodo in a different route than that's, how it started. If you imagine Cupcake Dog, that is the face I am making right now. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, the, um, the, the people all over the world um, were known for um, hunting animals into extinction. Yeah. And, and so many, like, environmentalists, that's what they focus on, not realizing that there will be other animals that will fill in those roles. I mean, you have bees that exist just to get pollen because there was a shit ton of pollen, yeah. and they're like, bees were like, huh. I wonder if that tastes good. You have pandas who only eat bamboo because there was so much goddamn bamboo that they couldn't keep up with it. And the bamboo uh, the pandas were like, hmm, I wonder if that's tasty. Yeah. And if they had no need to go get any other food resource, their bodies would slowly evolve and adapt to just eating bamboo. So, like, so many people are like, but we have to save these things. I'm like... They were all adapting to their current circumstances. Give them enough time and slowly start to introduce other foods into their diets and they will be able to consume other things. Like, slowly start to... Like, there's um, a bug. I don't know if you've ever heard of this or not. Uh, Lay it on me. There's a type of bug that actually has evolved to start eating plastic. Oh, yes, I have heard about this. Yes, yes, yes. They found them in the ocean and they've also Mm -hmm. found them in uh, landfills. Yep. Because this fucking plastic, right? Yeah. There's so much of it. It's not biodegrading. It's literally just a ample food source in all of these different places. Mm-hmm. It's a type of um, worm. Yeah. And um, yeah, they found them in both lo- those different spaces. And they will slowly but surely eat and consume fucking plastic. Yeah. <laughs> like. It's gnarly. 
And, and and that's Mother Nature for you. Like it's so many again. So many people say we we've destroyed the planet. Blah. No, no, we're destroying it for us. No, you've just made it inha- inhabitable for humans. And like Mother Nature will go along just fine. There's a comic yeah. of that that I yeah. really fucking love. It's like oh, you poor sweet naive egotistical asshole child of mine. No, the Earth will move on just fine without you. In fact, it'll probably be better without you. I've been saying all these things and you've been drawing dodos on an airplane, yes. finally being able to fly. And I love this flight attendant that didn't evolve to like, they didn't <laughs> adapt to actually make it bigger enough for them. It's kind of like they just took human things oh, and naturally. were just like, you know what? Fuck humans. They, they've they destroyed the planet. So after the end of humanity, they've destroyed everything. Dodos come back and they're like, we'll just, we'll just take all their shit. Yeah. Why not? I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's a good survival strategy. I mean, I'm here for it. <laughs> in, in the narrative of like maybe again, maybe Dodos learned how to use tools. Yes. And they were just like, you know what? Those airplanes you come keep flying in. Those those boats you keep coming into our our, our islands with. Yeah. Um what if they were ours? Yeah, absolutely. We've got Legolas 0985 been here. Uh, I'm here, Hello. been here since Hello. the start. But didn't realize I was logged in. Welcome, Legolas. Welcome. Wait, I believe that's Shanna. <gasps> Welcome. Oh my gosh. Welcome. Hello. If I, you're not Shanna, please let me know. I'm okay. pretty sure you're Shanna, but. <laughs> I mean, if you want to pretend that you are, then, you know. That's fine, too. Yeah. 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 You Fulfill could, that Shanna need that we have. You could totally just pretend to be Shanna and we would believe you. <laughs> it is Shanna. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had a feeling. Or is it uh, Shanna? Now we've cast too much doubt on it. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> um, so I used to be really good about, mm-hmm. at the start of the chat, talking about what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. But I forgot yeah. to do that today because we were listening to um, some some good old musicals before the start. Shanna, tonight we are looking at um, what if the world, how different would the world yeah. be if different animals were actually dominant species? And we're starting with dodos. Yeah. It looks like dodos have taken over our airlines. They have. And they're doing a great job of it, too. I kind of like you. in an Animal Crossing. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I am taking some inspiration from that. You know, Shanna, because you use the pumpkins, I know that it's not an imposter. Ah, because yes. A, a, yes. It, only a Shanna, only if you knew the real <laughs> Shanna, you would know that that would be the emoji that she would it's pick. true. Welcome, Shanna. I'm so All glad right. you're here with us. We're really... I think, I think these dodos are feeling good. I, I think... I think uh... I think we're ready for the next species. This is a real. I I I just have to talk about the the um, <laughs> flight attendant dodo. Yeah, that's really cute, Kenji. I I'm very very pleased with how this that turned really out. This is really good. You know, um, okay, we have to do this one. I just rolled okay. up. All right. And then maybe after that, we can go back to the first one I rolled up. <laughs> because the first one, once I tell you what it is, you're like, oh no, we couldn't have started we, with that. We couldn't. Like start I said, with that. slow burn. A yeah. slow burn is important. Burn, okay. essentially, especially that word, burn. Nah. Um, I might have given it away to I, you. I think I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. But what, what's our next one that you just rolled? What if cats <gasps> ruled the world? What if cats ruled the world? Oh, gosh. Well, I love the joke about how, like, um, the world can't be flat because if cats, uh, if it were, cats would have pushed everything off the edge by now. Yeah, um, yeah, it's truth. Yes. We were talking about it, and if cats were the dominant species... They would have a monument to the red dots oh, yes. that they have destroyed. That it was in the the red dot wars of eighty seven that they finally destroyed the red dots, and there's a big monument to it. And um, um, what else? And uh, we'd also love to hear ideas of people would have in the chat. What do you think the world would look like? If cats were the dominant species. I, I've got a very clear idea in my head, and I'm about to draw it up for y'all. Speaking of which, here's our tiny cat. We meow have meow. a tiny cat, and she rules our world. She does. Beatrice, what do you think? What would you, no. What do you think the world would look like if cats ruled the world? She's giving me this uh, this look. You know how like cats' eyes will kind of go out a little bit? Like it's a, that walled-eyed look? <laughs> She's giving me that look right now. What do you think, sweetie? I think, um... That tunas might be out of... Yes. Tuna would be extinct. Like, we're talking about (laughs) the Dutch and Dodos. Like, cats would destroy tuna. 
like the the seas would run red with their blood. Um, how do I live in Khajiit worlds? <laughs> <laughs> uh, dogs would be screwed though. Second class citizens. Oh, gosh. Yes, made to scoop poopies. Mm-hmm. Out of the sand. Um, Who's cleaning the box, if not puppers. Yeah, puppers mm-hmm. would definitely be second class citizens. Um, but they're too loyal to actually know how to like fight up to defend themselves. That's true. That's true. Like they, they would, would bark a lot, but cats would be like, do, you, do I need to call you the name? And they're like, <gasps> no, don't do it. Is someone being... <gasps> no, don't! A bad boy. Oh, no. And that would be enough to put them in line. They're like, um, bad boy Just dogs against the cats. The shame. The shame. But then they couldn't get past the shame. That's true. Oh, Their prison called. structure would be cones of shame. They wouldn't need actual jail cells. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would just be like societal shame of being called a bad boy. Like a bad dog. Exactly. Who is a bad dog? No, no, no. <gasps> Not me. No. I am the goodest boy. <laughs> I actually got to meet a really cute pupper yesterday. Oh my gosh. You told me and I'm still jelly. It's a five month old um, baby corgi girl mm. named Stella. And she had a, um, a harness That's a very good name that too. was covered in like purple crystals. And her human mom um, had a dress that matched. That's that's adorable. It was so it. cute. It was so, so cute. Stella was a very good pupper. Like, she was very wiggly. She was very excited just to give everybody kisses. But in the world ruled by cats, no. Fuck that shit. No. No, no. tummy rubs. Ugh. If, if tummy rubs what, what are punishable shame. by death. That uh, Crying shame, quite frankly, because tummy rubs are amazing. Tummy rubs are punishable by death unless the cat gave consent. I mean, consent is important regardless. I just throw that out there. For sure. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. put myself in, in a, a position, but I mean, like with with our cats. Yeah. They they show you their tummy and you think it's tummy it's consent. Just, you got it. You you have to. You have this primal need to rub that tummy. They show you their tummy and you're just like, "Oh, you're giving me permission?" Like, why would you be showing me your tummy otherwise? You offer it to me so freely. <laughs> Instead of a dark lord, you would have a queen. Oh my. Okay. You know what? Let's bring a little color into this. Um, I got a, a, uh, and look at the chat right now. We got Chan saying, I just pictured this between Mr. Peanut Butter and Princess Caroline from BoJack. I have not seen BoJack, so I don't know. I can't, um, yes you, or I can't, yes actually you, or yes and you. Words are hard. Uh, we got Chan saying, unless you're Salem, Salem loves tummy rubs, but only once he gets to know you. I, I will have to say, I am a very privileged, very blessed person (laughs) because... Salem let me love yeah. on him I've, I've just by coming meet, over. I've yet to meet Shanna's ch- uh, cat. Um, or Chance's cat, for that matter. Both but kitties. I would love to meet both kitties, quite frankly. Um, Salem, I got to know him right when he was a newborn. Like, uh, uh, yeah. ch- Shanna brought him um, into where I read, and we got all the baby kitty custuggles. And there was another cat named um, uh, Stanley. Um, shout out yeah. Stanley. Uh, I'm not sure if you're watching uh, tonight Rachel. with yeah. Rachel, but we got lots of uh, black cat appreciation here tonight. Both Stanley and um, Salem got to meet, and it was absolutely magical. It was super magical. Oh, Salem's God. a very sweet, a sweet boy. Um, and then uh, we got Shanna saying, he did. He knows who the true cat, who the cat people are. It's true. <laughs> I am a cat person through and through. Um, I didn't, I grew up with birds, parakeets, and one blue-fronted Amazon. But we didn't have the blue-fronted Amazon for very long. It was this woman who was a part of my mom's church, and she wanted to be able to travel. But Mm. she couldn't travel owning parrots. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, parrots will, um... Like, they, they have separation anxiety real bad, and they'll start pulling out their own feathers. Yeah. Like, it's if you own a, par- a parrot, you have to take care of that parrot for the rest of their life. And, and they can live a very, very long time. African greys live just as long as people do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And they have the mentality of, like, a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> they really do. Um, so this woman was trying to, to ask somebody else to adopt this bird so she could travel. She just retired and she wanted to do these other things. And so we tried to adopt Bugs. And uh, he was not having it. He was very depressed. Yeah. He was very sad. And we finally told the owner, we're like, we're really sorry. We wanted to give give uh, Bugs a good home. But he, he loves you. And, and she understood. And so she yeah. took him back um, willingly. It wasn't like we had to like rehome to him to another home or anything. Yeah. The original owner took him back. We had parakeets. Um, which um, the first one we had, which was like a blue parakeet. And um, her name was Birdie. And she made it laid that. like 14 goddamn eggs. Oh, geez. Yeah. She was very determined. And my mother felt bad having to remove her eggs every single time she'd lay one. Because she didn't have a mate. Yeah. They weren't fertilized. They were empty eggs. But she would sit on that little egg like, oh, I'm going to get a baby. And she's like, oh, that's not, that's not how it works. I'm so sorry. And then she'd like, fuck you, I'm going to lay another egg. She did 14 times before that bird finally was like... I don't think I'm going to get baby. Huh? She's like, no, no, I'm sorry, sweetie. And the bird had actually had depression for a while after that. She was like super depressed, but she was super bonded to my older sister. She would like bear her beak at us and she would try oh, to fight us if we got everywhere, anywhere near oh, her. Geez. So yeah, like my first pet really was a cat. <laughs> I was a, a 20, in my early 20s. And, um, yeah, yeah, I've had cats ever since. And, and I absolutely adore cats. I love their funny personality. I've never owned dogs. I had a dog when I was younger, and I love dogs. They're great. Very good pupper. Would own again. I just, um, I am not ready to own a dog at this point in my life, just because um, they really need their space. walkies. Yeah, just space. Like, yeah. cats are easy to, to have in an apartment. But, yeah. like, dogs, like... They, they need the space. Dogs need to go on their walks. Dogs need their exercise. I mean, there are some little dogs that aren't as needy for those things. Mm -hmm. um, but cats are super easy. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they will run up and down the stairs or run all over the apartments. Mm. Like, whatever they is they need. So you've... I thought we destroyed the red dots. Oh, no, no. This... this, this this cat has clearly destroyed the world outside. You can tell. What? Yes. This this cat is working on new red dot technology. Um, but I yes. thought cat society would be thriving. I I mean they are, but this this is a mad scientist cat. Oh my god! The red dot red dot lives. <laughs> no, we thought we destroyed lives. it in the war of eighty seven. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Um, I'm going to go to the chat real quick. Yeah. Um, Shanna's saying, I think birds are cool, but just seem like too much uh, work to own as pets. Ferrets and horses are hard enough. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I had parakeets growing up too. Birds, birds are a lot. I had a second parakeet after Birdie. His name was mm -hmm. Marvin. Oh, named yeah. after Starving Marvin. Um, from the South Park episode because my older sister traumatized this poor bird so terribly. Oh, yes, I just pie. wish everyone could see this right now because as Ken is working on this, our little cat Beatrice has just decided to sit right next to him and yep. just started rubbing his face with her face. Yeah, it was very hecking cute. And she's watching what he's drawing right yeah. now. I she's like, this is the society <laughs> that she's most perfect. I, I think she, she, wants, she wants this. She wants the power. So, if yeah. only I had opposable <laughs> thumbs, Maybe. you all would be doomed. Maybe we should roll up the next one so we don't give B any ideas. Oh, this is it for the picture? I maybe. I mean, I yeah, yeah. I think I think we're good. I think this is a good look because cats they just they they want to ruin. They want to destroy. They want to hunt. They want it's to true. kill. It wasn't uh, enough man. just to to um <laughs> Oh, you're really going to like this one. Okay. Um it's not enough that they um um ro rose to a society in which everything is perfect for cats because deep down in their hearts there are warriors true exactly. and they want to continue exactly. they defeated the red dot but they want it back they want the power because that they it want holds. the hunt back exactly. they want that back exactly yeah so what's their next one Copybaras. <gasps> Copybara society hell yeah what if copybaras hell yeah the world okay okay 
I, I know exactly what this is going to look like. Um, I'm looking I'm back really at the excited. chat real quick. Um, yeah, so Starvin' Orvin, um, my older sister had decided to get a parakeet for my younger sister. I've got two sisters, an older one, a younger one. I am that middle child. Middle child syndrome really does exist. And I am living proof of that. <laughs> but, um, the, um, cause my younger sister really wanted a pet. She really, really wanted a pet. I wanted a cat. And I knew my mother would never give me a cat. So I just kind of gave up on asking because I knew I would never get it. But uh, uh, my younger sister really wanted one. So my older sister who had Birdie, Birdie was bonded to her. She wanted to give my younger sister that same kind of pet experience that she had. And uh, my older sister actually got um, more birds when she got older. Um, she has uh, cockatoos or no cockatiels, um, the smaller ones cool mohawks mm -hmm. and then she didn't realize that because um, she got one and then they were lonely and sad so she bought a second one and didn't realize they were opposite gender and then before she knew it she had a whole fucking family of cockatiels yeah she had a lot of birds for a while and she called them her chickens but um but back to star and marvin he was a yellow parakeet and so when my, my older sister bought him at the pet store, she wanted to keep him a surprise as like a, a Christmas present. So she asked her best friend, hey, can I keep this bird at your house? Well, her best friend had cats. So she's like, okay, I'll keep him in the, the garage for a few days. But then, then, yeah. she fucking turned off the lights. Yeah. And then there's a cat that fucking lives in her garage. Oh, jeez. So this cat, this poor bird was being tormented by a cat in pitch darkness for like three solid days. Yeah, that, that'd give a lot of things just PTSD for sure. Oh, she, like, as far as I'm concerned, that was torture for that animal. Yeah. And, I'm not, um... I'm not feeling this. Erase but your art. Erase when in your doubt, erase your I art. liked what you were doing, well, but you. I get you. I get you. you know, and so, um, yeah, poor, poor Starvin' Marvin. And the reason why he was called Starvin' Marvin is because he was still in such shock after being tortured for three solid fucking days in pitch darkness, being harassed by a cat, um, yeah. that he was just in shock. He couldn't eat. He didn't move it. He didn't do anything. He was in, in total other shock. And then my sister was like, he's not doing anything. He's boring. Like, just being a spoiled little fucking princess. And I just felt so sorry for this poor little bird. And after a certain amount of time, he slowly started to, to ease back in. He was okay. He, he would take a little bath and he'd eat a little bit here and there. But he did not live a very long life. I will put it like that. He he definitely, that experience uh, knocked off quite a few years off of his life. That's yeah, unfortunate. And that was my pet experience. Yeah. <laughs> and so, again, when I was in my 20s, um, when I finally got my first cat, so that was like my very, I, I would consider that my very first pet. So since then, I've only ever had cats. I've had uh, three boy cats. And then our sweet baby girl kitty. Yeah. Meow, oh, meow. Who mewed at that? I, I don't know if the <gasps> audio picked that up. I didn't pick up on that either. I, I heard it. Oh, her meow. baby bee. She, her name is Beatrice. We call her baby bee. And uh, sometimes I forget that people don't know what we're talking about because, you know, as pet owners, she's like, I baby noises. Oh, and the, the cat baby names. Talk or... about like every stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, let me go back to the chat. Um, Chan says, I love other people's dogs. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy I enjoy petting and loving other people's dogs. They are just so much time. They they need a lot, a lot of time. They need a lot of energy yeah. and um like and like you said, space. And if yeah. I had those things, I would feel more comfortable getting a dog. B um used to love dogs until my uh, younger sister traumatized her. Yeah. And uh, now she doesn't really like people or dogs anymore. No. And I can't blame her. But no. yeah, um, same. hopefully sometime in, in the near future, we can start getting I'm, her more uh, accustomed to people and, yeah. and, and dogs again. I would love to uh, socialize be better because, yeah, not, not every human is, is like your sister. 
I know, poor baby B. She's getting better. There was a time when um, anytime the doorbell would ring, yeah. she would just hide. Yeah. Anytime people would knock on the door, she would just hide. Uh, because my sister had traumatized her so, yeah. so badly. And she used to be super friendly to people. She used to be like, oh, people are here. Hello. Mm-hmm. Oh, a-, a dog. Hello, friend. Let's let's snuggle. Let's be friends. Yeah. And now she's she's like, no, goodbye. The end. No, uh, no, no people. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. Peopled out already. Uh-huh. Um, go back to the chat. Fair. We've got Shanna saying, I hear they're super sensitive to candles and incense and stuff, too. Not really compatible for a witch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never did any of that stuff when I had birds, so I couldn't say. Um, and uh, she also says she really could be the queen bee. She really is. She is our queen bee. She absolutely is. And she'll is. rule, she'll Ooh. rule, she'll rule. And she can do most anything. It's true. Um, chances, wheezes, your voice for bee is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not all pets are for people, correct. Yeah. Rest in peace, Darwin Marvin. Yeah. Rest in peace, rest in paradise. Um, he definitely deserved better, for sure. Um, I love this fucking chill, Just chill ass copy. Like, Hell yeah! In a society where Kavibara has ruled the world, I don't think. I don't know. Do you think they would have all this technology, or would they just be down to vibe, or is this like a post-apocalyptic, like human world? I think copies absolutely would um, come up with good vibe technology. Mm. Um, so of course that means vinyls and stereos. Uh, it's very important. They would they would get out of their vibe zone just to learn how to vibe better. Exactly. Okay, That's, I can respect that. I mean, vibe based technology is very important. I'm just saying right now. Chance says, uh, Capybara Society is stoners. That, that's, that's exactly what I'm going for, yes? Yeah. Thank yeah. you for picking up on that energy. <laughs> I mean, it was 420 just three days ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm putting a little lava lamp in, too. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Capybara yeah. is, okay, so here's a funny story about Capybara. Mm-hmm. Since I'm here jabbing and, and Ken's doing all the heavy lifting. Uh, when Ken and I started dating about four years ago, yeah. um, I was on the anti-copy <sighs> train. And it, it's true. It was heartbreaking. It's true. I fully admit I did not like copies at a time in my life. And uh, Ken was like, how? They're so adorable. I'm like, they're kind of, they're kind of freaky. They're giant fucking rodents. Yeah. How could you think that's cute? He's like, they're so fucking adorable. I'm like, all right, Ken. Yeah. All right. You have five <laughs> chances <laughs> to present me five pictures of copybaras that are cute to convince me mm-hmm. that they are adorable. I did in like three. Yep. <laughs> it was like two or three <laughs> images, and I was immediately converted to comp, uh, camp compy. And I, I, I'm all about that copybara life now. They're so adorable. They're so sweet. I even managed to find a uh, similar, similar story. We were talking about sloths, too. And I managed to find some, some pictures of sloths that you thought were cute. It happened. Still, I, can't, I still can't say I'm I mean, part of sloth um, camp. I, I get that. That's valid. Um, but, like, there are cute sloths out there. But. <laughs> uh, so we got um, Shanna saying in the chat um, now exactly well what exactly is the copybara listening to we need to know oh I'm I'm about to put down a, a poster uh, of what this this copy is vibing does to does he smoke two joints in the morning uh, uh, does he smoke two joints at night not quite but it could be if you wanted does he smoke two joints I, in the afternoon when he's know, feeling all right. You know, at first, like, I was going to go a different route entirely, but now, like, that's all I can think about. So, I'm just going to try and draw, like, a Copybara <sighs> Sublime song. Or son. But that's not Sublime. Sublime? You they... were just saying Sublime. They're, they're lyrics. Oh my god, Ken. <laughs> oh no! Smoke Two Joints is a Sublime song! <laughs> no! That's Bob Marley! Oh my god. I'm they, the did they did a cover. It's a cover of a Bob Marley oh, song. I'm the dumb. That's like, oh no, Ken. Oh no. You're like one of those Zoomers that are like, 
like, oh, oh I no. love this song, but it was actually from somebody else originally. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, Legolas says it is Sublime. I thought <gasps> it was Bob Marley. Okay, let me, let me look this up. I, I'm I've always certain. known it as Sublime. I didn't uh, think Bob Marley ever did that song. But I'm pretty certain. I um. We'll find out. We'll find out in just a minute. It's here. Bob Marley. Okay, Bob Marley. It's did Bob do. Marley. So it is Sublime doing Sublime a cover. Sublime did a cover, but Bob Marley did the original. You know, in my defense, I will say this: like people did, um, uh, pe- people thought the man who stole the world. They they got pissed off at David Bowie for singing the song because they thought it was a Nirvana song because Nirvana yeah. did a cover and that blew up. So I will say I I I did not know that it was originally a Bob Marley song, but no, I, it's okay. I am of a mindset similar to those of my generation and, and it's before. originally Bob Marley. Okay, it's like the one cover that um, uh, Marilyn Manson did. What was that one song? Was it? Oh. Uh, Sweet, Dreams. Sweet Dreams, yeah, yeah it was yeah. Uh, um, the Eurythmics, that song. Do you know what? Shanna's right there with you. Okay. Um, her mind has blown as well. Yeah, okay. it was originally a Bob Marley song. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you think it's Bob Marley? I, right? <laughs> I, I mean, of course. You should have, like, some whole other stoners in here in this, like, society of, like, copybaras. Where are the, the um, Cheech and Chong uh, um, copies? <laughs> No, like it says, okay, now I did know that David Bowie uh, originally sang A yeah. uh, Man Who Stole the World. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when people were, like, so mad about, like, uh, Sweet Dreams, and were just oh, like... Oh, jeez. <sighs> it was originally yeah. Bob Marley. Yeah. I had dreadlocks for a short moment, and I had to learn this shit, but then I... you have dreadlocks. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a white woman who has dreadlocks, you learn these things. I... <laughs> At least I'm not so bad that I thought that... When Kanye West and Paul McCartney did a, uh, a song oh, together, God. that Kanye just made this Paul McCartney guy's career. Like, oh, no, God. no, people, no, oh, to no. be that 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 innocence. No, that yeah, innocence. right. Okay. Um, I guess Tainted Love. <laughs> yes, Tainted Love was a cover. Soft Cell. Uh, they were not the original. It was a Motown song. Oh. Respect was also a cover too. Um, R-E-S-P-C-T? Mm-hmm. That was a song, like, well before Motown. Whoa. They covered that song as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that one. Yep. Because yep. Nice. I can do it. I'm, 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 I don't got enough yeah. funk. Okay. okay. I, I mean... No, I'm afraid we don't. <laughs> All right. I am actually ready for the one that we first right. rolled up. Okay, let's do it. What, what's, what's, what's the new... Dominant species that we're looking at tonight uh, for this next one. Speaking of um, uh, um, all of these things, mm-hmm. infernal <laughs> demons. <sighs> what if demons what if, rule what if the, the world? The demonic post-apocalyptic hellscape. Like, like humanity no longer is on top of the food chain. We are, in fact, uh, the the demonic. Uh, um, Sub subbed to them. As yeah, it were. yeah. It was the um, end of Revelations. It's hell mm-hmm. on earth, and now demons are just kind of vibing on earth afterwards. They are now the dominant species. What would Earth look like with demons? Like I said, we couldn't start with this one. No, of course we, not. We had to ease into it. <laughs> we, we'd be going way too strong with something like this. Yeah. First, we have to draw a really heckin' good demon. Speaking of smoke two joints in the morning. <laughs> Smoke two joints at night. I want to look at the lyrics. I haven't looked at that smoke song in Smoke two her. joints in the afternoon. They make me feel all right. I smoke two joints in time of peace and two in time of war. I smoke two joints before I smoke two joints and then I smoke two more. Yeah. Hey, I listen what to I do. Hey. a lot of Sublime and that's why I thought that um, they were the original artist, but I did nope. not know. It's Bob Marley. But yeah, I it's learned Bob a thing Marley. tonight. Yeah. I'm... Oh, jeez. I mean, y- you're talking about the devil's lettuce. <laughs> that that sweet, sweet skunk cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you know, I've been 
kind of like I'm eager to get back out and hiking lately. Mm-hmm. But I also realize that it's skunk cabbage season here in the Pacific oh, Northwest. I'm like, mm. that is an actual plant and not marijuana. I'm like, do I want to? Yeah. Do I want to wait a little bit before the skunk cabbage is gone? <laughs> Um, yes, it is a Northwest native. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the botanical name off the top of my head. Oh, I couldn't tell you. It's been like well over 10 years since I took Northwest Ecology in I college. mean, I could Google it just I like mean, I Googled this last thing, that's but true. it's Google's not worth it. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I, uh, um, I, I do like, it's a beautiful plant. Absolutely gorgeous. Very, Good very, for our, our local um, ecology. Very but, fun shaped leaves. Uh, it smell bad. Yes, it smell like farts. Skunk cabbage. It smell like farts. It does not smell good. It um, attracts uh, flies as its pollinator, and that's why it smell bad. Mm. It's not as bad as a, a corpse lily <laughs> that actually smells like rotten meats. I and um, my background's in horticulture, so I used to grow a lot, a lot of plants. Took care of a lot of different plants, and uh, I have grown. Um, corpse uh, flowers before and they do they really smell like rotten meats and they oh, will God. absolutely hit that um that gag reflex what is this demon up to is he an accountant um i mean i figure like you really want to have a hell on earth it's gonna be a bureaucracy so they're not that different from what we have they're just just a little worse and really that's that's hell to me it's like everything's the same just a little worse the um um, that, that bit from, um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mm -hmm. I forget the word and I forget the line, um, but it's, it, it's the scene with the Vogons and mm. he's basically supposed to fill out all of these specific forms. Oh, yeah. He's like, but did you fill out the K94273 uh, form? Of course you're supposed to fill out that, not the K259732 form. I think I might have said the same thing twice. I... No, you said seven three. Oh, the, the, the I got first really time. good. And then you said four the next time. What did so, I say yeah. two? But regardless, and, and and then they're like, you know, maybe we should just give this up. We should just walk away. He's like, no, I'm British. I was born for to fill out paperwork. But it's this very specific word for filling out paperwork. And he, you just see these these like montage scenes of him like filling out twenty different forms, and it's really it's really funny. Um, I'm going back to the chat real quick. Um, uh, Shanna saying, Ken and I were today's years old. Yes. Yes, yes we were. Uh, Chan says, it's so strong on one road near my house. Oh, the skunk cabbage. Um, also, the, the Vogels are the SSA. <laughs> okay. I do love this little, this little eat shit and grin like he's got. He's like... Oh, I'm so sorry to say I cannot fill this form out today because you forgot to give me my, uh, give the 79224. Yeah. You're like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> this is actually Stephanie just trying to do my taxes. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Glad tax season is, is done for us. Jesus Christ. I, I definitely put mine off way longer than I should have, but I always do that. I do too. I have a problem. I have a problem. <laughs> For me, because I run my own business, um, tax season is much more involved than how it used to be when I'd have your WD-40. <laughs> What's the, for the form called? The W? Uh, the, the, um, well, it's a W-2. It's like your, your, your oh, payment. Oh, okay. But it's like the... Uh, oh, God. What was it? Like a 1040 or something? No. 1040, I, WD-40. Yeah, like, yeah. I legit accidentally called it a WD-40 one year, and my friends laughed at me, and I'm like, I can't remember shit. Yeah. My brain is not wired for these numbers and things. I can't do this shit. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah, filing my taxes as a small business owner. They don't tell you what form to fill. They don't tell yeah. you what to write off. They don't tell you how to organize your write-offs. You kind of just have to throw it all into your books and then slowly start to figure out where, what category it's supposed to be in. Because if you pay rent someplace 
for a business that goes into yeah. one specific category, which has a percentage for your write-offs. And if you buy like supplies for your office, including like fucking office snacks, that goes yeah. into a different, completely different category. Yeah. And and how do you remember it? Like I've gotten better over the years, and then every single goddamn year they fucking change it. Yeah. They fucking change it. And it's so fucking frustrating because if you don't have enough write-offs, you will have to pay a stupid large amount of yeah. money into yeah. the government. Meanwhile, fucking Jeff, Jeff Bezos and other billionaires get off paying nothing. Yeah, and bullshit. always, always makes my blood boil the fact that I have to pay t more in taxes than they yeah. do. Yeah. Percentage-wise, not dollar bill-wise, because I'm sure there's people out there who will be like, um, actually... Like, no, no. Stay out of here with your I'm actually nonsense. Their only reason why they pay as much as they do is because the only way they can get to them is through their fucking sales tax. Yeah. And through other forms of taxes because you have all these other assholes. People complain about property taxes. It's because fucking billionaires are trying to get away from it and trying to cheat out of the system. It, there's yeah. a lot I can say. But this is not the right chat. No. <laughs> We're here to make people laugh. We're <laughs> Speaking of demons and torture... <laughs> Listening to us talk about taxes in the U.S. system. This year, I, I got confirmation because I, I, I have family who live in Europe and I have a lot of friends who live in Europe, but I've never yeah. talked about taxes with yeah. them. Yeah. Like, we will talk about other things, but those types of things just never come up. And uh, another friend of mine confirmed something I already kind of had a feeling of. And a lot of other developed nations, um, what they do for their taxes every year is they basically calculate everything for you yeah send you all the they thing. send it to yeah. you and say hey does this look right and then you you double check their work yeah and then you either pay or you get your money it's such bullshit oh yeah it's such bullshit that they make u.s people like the u.s citizens have to do so much work for their taxes yeah, agreed and so yeah it does feel like hell on earth <laughs> oh and chance so, yeah. is gonna call him wd-40 from now on yay nice nice <laughs> all right you know i'm, I'm feeling good I'm, I'm i'm feeling good this this demon now has to live through the bureaucracy um and the eternal bureaucracy. If only he could smoke um, two joints in the morning. I, that might make it more bearable, quite you know, frankly. I think that's the whole reason why <laughs> we get the devil's lettuce in, in today's society. <laughs> just to help us cope through just, just all of the... the, the day. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Are you ready for your next um, species oh. um, that would hypoth hypothetically rule the world better than yes. humans? Yes, I, I would. You ready? I, oh, better? that We're doing better than humans? Because this, what I just drew, is about the same. Just a little worse. You know... Yeah. I, I, oh man, I misunderstood the prompt. No, All no, right. no, no, no. It's because right. this next one would. It's because okay. this next one would. All right. I'm kind of giving, I'm kind of jumping the gun. Trees. Trees. All right. Trees. What if, what if trees were the dominant species? Yeah. Okay. That would be better. That would be That would better. be a lot better. I agree. Because Doug... Already a better president. Not not coming about our oh. current president, but oh, yeah. like any president in the history of ever. Yeah, right. Like vote for Doug. Vote for Doug. Doug Fur. Also do 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 Yeah, like ants. ants okay. Yes. Okay. Alright. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Cause now chance said ants and now I gotta bring my Lord of the Rings knowledge in. My Lord of the Rings. I mean, no! Shannon's username is Legolas, so I think our friends are here for uh, for the Lord of the Rings lore. Okay, so Ents actually sucked. <gasps> because they took 12 million years to make decisions and they want, didn't want to get involved in things. I mean, yeah. And it wasn't until it got personal that they finally get involved. And yeah, they were a force to be reckoned with, but as far as it comes to war. But uh, they also lost the Entwives. They just lost them. Do you remember oh, yeah. that part? Uh, I remember that, yeah, because like, there were ants that like got banished from their society and uh, became like evil trees in like this spooky forest. Oh, and... you're talking Cimmerillion. Am I? I thought that was part... No, no, Frodo... Yeah. Frodo, like... 
uh, ran afoul of some of these. Like, that was, like, just before they got to Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil saved them from these evil Ents. Okay, but their origin story is in the Cimmerillion. Oh, okay. All right. They don't explain them at all in Lord of the Rings. They don't talk about the lore in in Lord of the Rings. okay. Like, they do with pretty much fucking everything, including every single meal and every single leaf on every single Ent. Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Yeah. But they don't talk about the lore in that in Lord of the Rings. But they do exist. You're right. Uh, uh, no, no, no. There, there's uh, in the Cimmerillion they go into okay. the whole I origin of of who they that. are and what they were doing. Yeah. Um, no, the Ent wives were just the lady trees, mm-hmm. and they just lost them. Is what they said. They just they just kind of fucked off in the forest. Which you know what? If I was an Ent wife, I'd probably be like, "Fuck you." We're going to go have a lesbian orgy over here and fuck all you assholes. We're not making any more tr- ends. They were like, done. <laughs> That's how they got the, the wood nymphs then. Yeah, they were yeah. just like, all right. fuck all y'all. And they just kind of fucked off. And so that's what they were like. Well, we don't want to risk it because we our, our species is pretty much done. We yeah. can't, we dare, we have no way of reproducing. We don't know where the lady ants went because they decided to go start their own coven in the middle of the woods and they don't want to talk to us anymore. Fair. Again, valid, yeah. valid. Yeah. And um, so, so ends as far as running their own society kind of sucked at it. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, it's like whale song. Yeah. Taking yeah. 12 years to say a single thing. <laughs> Sorry, nice. I had to commit to the bit. <laughs> um, uh, we got Chance saying, or excuse me, uh, Le- uh, Shanna saying, um, that's what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, you did it. Chance, I'd probably be an evil end. I mean, <sighs> there's a lot I could say about evil in a fucking Tolkien. Stupid lights of the trees and oh, um, no no don't 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 go down that path that I can't follow I oh I couldn't finish the Cimmerelli and it was so dense it was so bad and you know how I told you I have two copies of the Cimmerelli oh I know I lied you have three I have three oh it's gosh. on my Kindle as well oh <laughs> okay. well I mean do digital copies count I guess digital copies count. It's, uh, yeah, and how I, how I made it through the Cimmerillion is, uh, I, I don't know how people could do it before the end time of the internet, yeah. because how I read it was that I would read the book until I'd come to a thing like, what the fuck is that? And then I'd stop and I'd go to the Lord of the Rings wiki, take 20, 30, 40 minutes to read about the history of that, and then I could go back into the Cimmerillion and continue reading. Until I would hit another thing. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And then back to the wiki. And that was how I made it through. And, um... There's... (laughs) There's this this level of, like... You, you know how people are like, oh, the Balrog and hell, or, and, and Casa Doom, and oh, it was such a big fucking deal, and Gandalf became, died, and he became Gandalf the White, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so then Tolkien was just like, you know, how do I make it more epic? How do I make yeah. it more epic? What if instead of just like, a uh, Balrog? What if it was an army of Balrogs? Uh, aren't the Balrogs just like fallen wizards? Kind of. Because wizards are also kind of like angels. Oh, I hate that. I hate knowing that. Yeah, they're kind of like angels. So, kind of? Shrug? There's yeah. a lot of things that um, even uh, uh, Tolkien's son couldn't really confirm. I mean, fair. Fair. And he still tried to write more books in the series, but you kind of have to make it your own at that point. And he's trying to be true to this resource material, trying to go through all of his dad's yeah. notes. And we're just like, I, I guess this is what he was going for. But uh, to answer your question, kind of? Kind because, of. Kind um, of is the, really the only answer yeah. that, <laughs> that can exist for that, honestly. There's like an elven city. Where, like, a lot of your big-name elves were hanging out at one point. Okay. And then, um, uh, Sauron 
and like they were like, we want the light, the the, the delights of the two trees, and the, we want the cimmerals, and they're like, fuck you, no. And they're like, too bad, we're gonna charge onto your elven city, and we're gonna make a big fucking deal until you give it to us. And they're like, you suck, and like you suck more, and, and they waged war and basically destroyed the whole entire elven. Uh, um, and, and and the way, okay, I've had this debate with my cousin. Yeah. That, because my cousin firmly believes that the humans were the favorite species of Tolkien. I'm like, did you see the shit he wrote about elves? Oh, elves are horrible. Like, I hate the shit that's, like, the lore Tolkien has about elves. It's it's bad. It's dumb. Oh, no, they're totally his favorite children. Yeah, absolutely. Like, they can do no wrong, except when he makes one really, really, really ding-dang evil. Like, it has to be Mm -hmm. to that level of evil for them to be bad. Yeah. And but all their elves are perfect and they can never be raped. They they, yeah, they will just die. they just so, straight ugh. up die. Oh, they they can never be uh, uh, uh destroyed in that way. But but the way she was trying to say it just because of all the poetry and other things he wrote about the humans. I'm like I no no as far as like a favorite child, I would really have to say it's the elves, especially if you've read the Cimmerillion. Which yeah. I'm, I'm like not really looking forward to the. Um, <laughs> yeah, the show. The yeah. show. Yeah. I don't know how they're gonna fucking do it. Yeah. I mean, I have ideas of how they could do it, but when I was reading through the Cimmerillion, mm-hmm. I was like, well, if you took out this, 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 and this, and then actually just told the story of the Cimmerils, you could actually make a somewhat coherent comprehensive like prequel to Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But that didn't happen. The Cimmerillion is just like you try to put all of the the lore into the lore lore, and um, try to throw all of that shit all in at once and it just it it didn't have all of the other notes. Like I said, the only way I was able to read through it is that I had the the Lord of the Rings wiki uh, readily available. So I could read through the shit, so I could understand what the fuck he was trying to say. Yeah. I'm gonna hop in the chat really quick. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it sounds more like whales than ants. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Chancel says, "I don't know what's worse, Odin as Jesus or Odin as characters as angel." <sighs> There's a lot I could say. Yeah. Uh, Chance, or excuse me, uh, Shanna says, "At least Tolkien confirmed that while he was Christian, Lord of the Rings was not a Christian book, unlike somebody else's book." Looks at C.S. Lewis, condescendingly, and says, "No elves were his uh, were his fave. Absolutely were yeah. his fave." Um, um, I know, and so many fucking Christians love to come in and say how uh, Lord of the Rings was a Christian book no. because he's a Christian. That- uh, my mother and my older sister uh, traveled half across the country uh, to go to a fucking seminar uh, before the time uh, of TED Talks, which is essentially a TED Talk about how Tolkien is a fucking, like, this all is allegory for Christianity. Uh, the, uh, no, 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 it's not. No. It's really not. Ugh. Chance says, um, if I ever die, I believe detailed instructions on how to publish my unfinished works. <laughs> Right? Um, what an ash. Yeah. Screw you, Dad. I would be a redwood if I want. I don't think I can be a redwood if I want. <laughs> Tremble at home, Doug. Or Trouble at home, Doug. <laughs> well, that sass talking tree That's in right. the back. That's right. Can you do one last tr- yes. tree for me in the yes. background? What, what, what kind of tree you want, baby girl? The Deku tree? The... Yes. Thank yes, you. I will put Thank it in you. a Deku tree. Speaking of other trees, um, besides just Lord of the Rings. Okay, where am I going to put it in now? Just, just, just um, wherever, you know, in the background. I actually have in my home a uh, picture of the two trees from from the Cimmerillion with the lights in between. Like, um, do you see it, Ken? It's right up there. See it? Oh, 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 that's what that <laughs> is? <laughs> I, I never knew. <laughs> I have a hung up picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need. Oh no, my laptop. Okay, okay, okay. I'm oh, no. still here. I'm still here. Uh, we got uh, Shanna saying uh, Gandalf was just as cool, bro. Not the same as Lion Jesus. Oh my fucking no. god, Lion Jesus. Wait, would you see the tree is trans? Um, 
You want to be a lead red one? Maybe. I think that tree can be whatever that I, tree wants exactly. to be. Absolutely. That tree. that tree knows what DNA is inside of it. And if it got cross-pollinated with a redwood, I think it would know. I mean, nothing's saying that their tree mom didn't step out on their tree dad and um, actually uh, had a, a redwood child. Who's to say that redwood pollen just wasn't floating around That's in the true. air anyways? Trees get and, freaky. And they, get, they, they know that that pollen is deep within their soul. I mean... And and even if it wasn't actually in their DNA, but, like, they know that's a part of them, they get to decide that. What What is what is springtime and pollinators, if not just really horny trees? They pretty much spit out their spooge anywhere they and do. everywhere. They do. So, you, as far as you're talking about DNA, yeah. anything can go. Yeah. So, them trying to tree. say very specific species for trees... Fuck that, old man. Yeah, Fuck that. Yeah. Like they, if they know that they're a redwood, that's something they know about that themselves. Kid, that that's kid what they know is about themselves. Gonna grow up to be a redwood. I'm yeah, just saying. They know that about themselves. Okay. okay, I think I think I'm ready <laughs> for the next for the next dominant species. Uh, um. Okay, I'm gonna talk about light and Jesus in here oh, in just gosh. a second. Oh, I already rolled that one. <gasps> Yay! Ooh. I took a great moment to take a sip of water. Kenji. What's up? What's our next one? <gasps> Crows? Crows! Crows society. We were thinking oh. of like really intelligent animals, okay. and that's why I was like, I can't believe we didn't think of dolphins. But yeah, uh, crows. Yeah, right? Crow brain. Crow brain. Crow society, Crow society would, would be, be built upon jewels. Like it would, it, it, they would be a little messy, I think. Probably. Although I mean, no, their their nests are very clean. They actually have complex societies where they have crow royalty. That's true. Yeah. I uh, I'll tell my crow story in just a second. But yeah, they have complex societies. They've got very distinctive roles. Crows mate for life. I think crow society as the, the dominant species would fucking be badass. Like, they would, would have great. figured a lot of shit out. They would definitely have gotten rid of the trash problem that humans oh, absolutely. have. Absolutely. Like, their cities would be fucking polished and clean, and, and they would definitely have all their jewels and shinies, and they wouldn't fuck over the planet in order to get it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I think I think crow society would be, like, peak. Peak society, and something only would, humans could ob hope would, to obtain. Would you say it would be beak society? No. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for destroying that joke. You're welcome. Kaka! <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to fucking lion Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. I remember reading uh, C.S. Lewis as a small person and and mm -hmm. watching the BBC special because I, I remember I was telling you I watched a lot mm -hmm. of BBC growing up. And when other people tried to tell me that Asland was like a uh, uh, um, a Jesus allegory. I was like, why? Why was that even necessary right. in the story? I was like, why? Aslan should be smart enough to know that that won't stop them. Mm -hmm. Like, holy fucking shit! Are you fucking dense, people? <laughs> Like, really? No salty opinions at all. No, like, but really, like, are, 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 people who would read the book of, like, Aslan saying, oh, well, I'll sacrifice myself. I'll give the White Queen what she wants. And I'm like, are you fucking dense? Are you a fucking moron? You yeah. know that won't stop her. She will just continue to keep doing what she's doing. Yeah. You're literally sacrificing your life for nothing. But, like, does he come back as, like, a holy ghost or something? He, or he, he resurrects because, of course. But, like, did Aslan know it was going to happen? Because I don't think Jesus knew that was going to happen. I don't know. I, it, you know, I don't know. Like, coming out of post-Easter post, post -Easter of, like, yeah. Ken and I were talking about it. Our horribly blasphemous uh, 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 stream last week. If you want to watch some, some and see some really great 
really blasphemous art. Oh, yeah. Um, last yeah. week was really good. Like Sexy Bunny Jesus. Oh, yeah, it was good. Sexy Bunny Jesus was probably was one of my faves. Jesus, oh, the Easter Bunny coming out of the cave, yeah. resurrected after being um, crucified on the cross. <laughs> We didn't draw the straight up the, the the crucifixion of Bunny Jesus, but just 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 the afterwards. Just you know, it's the good stuff that people talk about. They don't talk about the holder part, except if you're Catholic. Yeah, Catholic will put Catholics will put that mangled corpse right in dead center of their fucking building. They're like, oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, jeez, I'm glad I grew up in a religion that didn't focus on the dead body. I, uh, I did not grow up Catholic. I grew up Presbyterian. But I have been in a number of different Catholic churches. And just to see their fixation on, like, the, the corpse is... Well, they also have a love of dead body parts. So they're fucking, um... um I'm just not oh, what are they called? The relics. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, relics, yeah. And you, and you throw some things on top of those dead body parts and they become blessed. So weird just as god intended uh, yes <laughs> as he as he uh um told the rich people to fuck off and um yeah. people make money off of relics but um you know never mind what he actually said yeah, right. but because who cares because really who does who who fucking does care because he people who wrote about him never met him yeah it's like a hundred years after he supposedly lived that people wrote shit about Which, him. Hey, if you want to learn more, watch last week's stream. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Really, last week's stream was a lot of fun. It, it was, was very funny. It we was. really enjoyed it. Oh, I got Shanna saying, no, Ken. Uh, and I grew up in a religion that would have sided with uh, Gilead. Uh, blessed be the fruitcake. I don't know that reference. Bless, uh, aside with Gilead, blessed would be the fruitcake. Is it because they don't use bread and wine in communion? They use, like, crackers and water? Uh, bread, actually. Oh, they uh, still use bread, okay. Yeah, just white bread. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. Sure Are we community. talking, like, Wonder Bread white yes, bread? Yes, <gasps> No! Or whatever you happen to have in your kitchen. Whatever it's the 14-year-old like... assigned to bring the, the bread for that week has. Not even, like, a, a French bread from, like, Fred Meyer's Bakery you take no. home and bake? <sighs> no one's gonna be that fancy for the friggin' ward. No. What? No, no one cares. It was Wonder Bread? It was, the, uh, yeah. More than likely, yeah. Wow. The original text, Blessed Be the Fruit. Oh, A Handmaid's Tale. Oh, oh, oh. I've never okay. watched yeah, that one. I've not watched that, that one, yeah. but I've heard it's really good. I've heard it's really, really good. What's going on in this scene? Um, you'll see here in a second. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm putting down some text for the funnies. Gotcha. Um, are they like trying to sell their gold? Uh, they might be trying to sell some shinies. Okay. Okay. Um. The oh, what show was I saying now? Blessed are the cheese makers. <laughs> the cheese makers. Now is it any cheese? Is it is it just specifically cheese makers, or is it any manufacturer of dairy products? <laughs> After last week's stream, I forced Ken <laughs> to. Force. Yes. Yes. I absolutely forced Ken. I twisted his arm. Uh, he was totally down to watch my favorite I movie absolutely. in the whole entire world. Life of Brian. Because I would never want to watch a movie unless there was full frontal nudity. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and it has it. Yes. Um, uh, well, Life of Brian is my one of my absolute yeah. favorites, and that was really funny. I grew up with, like, your old... Like, when you think of, like, the communion wafers, mm -hmm. that's just... It, it's worse than, than Wonder Bread. It really is. It's just kind of like cardboard. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had those kind of wafers? I, I am familiar with them, but um, yeah, I did not grow up with them. Yeah, I had those and and like fruit juice. That was like yeah. reddish. Kind of like, it's probably cranberry juice now that I think about it. It's probably it was cranberry mm. juice. Um, my very first communion that they made a big fucking deal about that they're like it's your choice if you want to do it it wasn't your choice no it's never your, no, it's choice. your choice you you were socially pressured into it and yeah. if you didn't do it you'd be socially shamed for it anyways um the um 
for that was one of those wafers and also uh, um, uh, grape juice. I did attend one Catholic mass um, when I was still kind of Christian. And they were like, if you're baptized, you're welcome to come up. And I'm like, well, I'm baptized. So sure. What they meant was in Catholicism, not baptized as yeah. vanilla Wicca. Or vanilla Wicca. Yeah. Vanilla. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Oh, spicy opinions. Uh, yeah. uh, like uh, yeah. vanilla Christianity. Um, um, <laughs> that. So you can only give 20 for it. I mean, it, it, it's cubic zirconium, let's be honest. <laughs> That crow does not seem very pleased. This is not no, showing no. height this, of this crow is not very sophisticated happy. crow society. I mean, you know they're going to have their pawn shops because it's all about, like, the shinies. And what do you That's do with true. shinies? That's true. That is very true. Yeah. <laughs> if penguins were there. They would hold them and they would keep them. They want their shiny rocks. That's true. Penguins don't care. They would never care. sell it. As long as it's a shiny stone. They, they don't care about whether it's lab grown or not. Did they just want their shiny stones? <laughs> Crow society, I think, would be peak society. Like, I yeah. Still say they'd be peak society. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I have the next one ready. Let's do it. But let me hop into the chat really quick. Um, actually, I'll, I'll give you the next word, and then yeah. we'll hop in the chat. Yeah. Um, are you ready? I'm ready. Octopi. <gasps> I love octopus. Octopuses! Yeah! Yay! Yeah! They are okay. some of my favorite animals. Chat. Um, okay. It says, fun fact, you can just buy communion wafers and eat them. Oh, you can. You yes, absolutely you can. can. I, uh, back when I used to do a lot of cons, uh, I would go to room parties. And it was this one room party I was at at a steampunk convention. Um, and this guy had, like, he made a steampunk, like, priest outfit. Oh, and he just totally went into it. And he bought one of those boxes of communion wafers. Oh, no. And we used them as garnishes for drinks. And, oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah, it was really funny. That is funny. Uh-huh. Um, they're pretty terrible. They're, they're pretty, like, it, yeah. um, like, when you think of leavened bread, but drier and, like, kind of like cardboard. No, it's like saltines. No, it's that's actually saltines are a really good comparison to those. Like, oh my gosh. it's it's that's... pretty much like styrofoam. Styrofoam. Oh, no. That would be. It's not like cardboard. It's more like styrofoam. That is how I would best describe those wafers. Oh, as they taste no. like styrofoam. How do I taste? Uh, how I know the comparison? Yeah, I was that kid that ate styrofoam. Fight me. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. My my <laughs> science teacher in eighth grade like gave us styrofoam to eat too because like. There, it's a certain type. It's not all styrofoam, obviously, but there's a it's very corn -based. specific corn-based type of packing peanut that is basically your same recipe as Cheetos, but without the cheese dust. Yeah. So he'd bring it in and just like eat just these giant bags of it just to freak out students. And of course, he gave us the opportunity to eat it too. That's funny. Yeah. No, I've I've absolutely eaten packing peanuts as well. Um. We got uh, Shanna saying, one of the rare cases where the show slash movie was better than the book, I am H.O. Oh, I moved so past past the comments. Um, what mm. show was that again? Oh, uh, Handmaid's Tale. Over! I thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about the show. Um, Chance saying, the only Christ's body after being blessed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chan says, uh, Ken's unbridled joy at octopuses brought me joy. Uh, <laughs> is that why puffy Cheetos remind me of styrofoam? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes it is. Yes, because it's, uh, it's styrofoam. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those little communion wafers, they're, they're pretty much, I, it might be the same exact recipe, but you, what if you, what if you took them and you got them really wet and you turn into a mush and then you flatten them out and then put like a little plus sign in the center that's your communion wafers. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Only the highest quality for Christ. Clearly. <laughs> Only the highest. You you got something special with your white wonder bread. I <laughs> didn't realize it at the time is whatever was in the pantry, quite frankly. Well, that's really funny to me. Yeah. I remember when I was uh, still a Christian, and I was only Christian until I was 18 years old. I broke up with Jesus when I was 18. It was him, not me. Um... Excuse me. 
I still got some more blasphemy in me yeah. from, from last week's stream. <laughs> but, um, Fair. Uh, uh, when I was still a Christian, pre-18 years old, Stephanie, which is almost 20 years ago, uh, not a, that I, I'm talking about it, but, um, yeah, pre-18 year old Stephanie, I remember being at, like, a Sunday school, like, youth, youth group uh, outing of some sort, and somebody was talking shit about a group that had used something else other than what they had used in church for communion. And this other guy says, I've done it plenty of times. And people were like, shocked. <gasps> How could you? And he's like, yeah, I used Snickers and Mountain Dew for communion once. They're like, How could you? He's like, well, I'm a priest. I can just bless it. Doesn't matter what it is, just so long as I bless it. And then they, there was a horror, of course, a big long conversation about why they were wrong. But I've heard that from other people. Of them using other things wonder, to bless, ah, to be geez. the blood of the Christ. Is this an octopus just punching fish? Yes. Is this like a, 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 a main arena sports, sporting yes. event? Yes, it is. Okay, but octopus are really intelligent. They are, Oh, absolutely. Like... They, you know, maybe they like to unwind with some, some blood sport. I have heard. I have heard that octopus just like to punch fish for fun. They're like, you're too close to me. Bunch. Get the fuck out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here. Um, I, I would love to see the sporting event. I love that you put two <laughs> tentacles in each of the booties. Mm-hmm. Gotta have all eight uh, represented in there. Mm-hmm. And those unsuspecting fish. Absolutely. Actually, would you do me a favor? What's that? Would you give me... Uh, would you put those... Um, the, the mask on them like they would for Hispanic wrestlers. A, a luchador? Yes. Will you I please mean, put them in luchador masks? That, that because, is... Oh no, when you put the mask on then you're the good guy. If you, you take off the mask then you're the bad guy. The luchador mask means you're the good guy. Okay, I'm not But maybe, maybe, familiar. maybe he's an asshole. Maybe, maybe he is an asshole and he does, he does want to punch the, the good guys. Why I know this is because I knew somebody who did semi-professional wrestling, and That's he would sell luchador awesome. masks. The guy was um, half black, half white, but um, because he was kind of a shorter guy, um, the wrestling school that he went to, there was one guy who was teaching luchador-style <laughs> wrestling. That's dope. And he just thought he was Mexican, oh and he's like... Gosh. And just totally embraced him. Like, no, I'm teaching you fucking everything. Because <laughs> he thought he was Hispanic. Oh, jeez. He's not. <laughs> oh, jeez. And so he made his uh, wrestling name Azure Blue. <laughs> blue Blue, all right. It's, it, Azure it. means blue. Yep. And so, yes, his name was Blue Blue. And uh, he would go, they would go to, like, different, like, schools. That's and awesome. different, like, uh, uh, community centers to do their semi-wrestling performances. That's and they awesome. totally did it, like, WWE style where they're, Gosh. like... Because they all know the style of that, that wrestling. Mm -hmm. But he would do luchador style within that. And because he that did something different. Terrible. And so he would sell, like, he would go down to um, uh, San Diego, like, really mm -hmm. close to the border and, um, or he, sometimes he would go into Mexico and just buy a shit ton of luchador masks as he, as, as much as he could. And then he would sell them at those events. But yeah, nice. when he took off the mask that he was the bad guy, when you put mm, on the mask, that okay. means you're the good guy. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was really funny. Like I, I learned a lot about like, some, cause he would just, the, the other ladies at that office, this is the, the one time I worked in, in an office. I worked in collections for a payday loan company. <laughs> when I tell people that, they're like, ooh. And I, was, I was actually one of the nicest uh, debt collectors you ever did talk to. And payday loan companies, for everybody to know, this is across the United States. I can't speak for other countries or places, but across the United States, uh, payday loan companies do not report to the credit bureau. So if you think yeah. taking out payday loans will improve your credit, mm, you're not, it's just wrong. You will not improve your credit by taking out payday loans. No. You're only giving them money, um, which <laughs> if you are in a pinch, a payday loan is not a bad option to pay 20 bucks to, or 40 bucks to uh, borrow 80, uh, $800. If you're in a pinch, that's not a bad, that's not a bad, like, 
as far as what you have to pay as far as a loan goes. Plus, if you default, it won't screw up your credit either. That's the biggest thing that I was going to get to, yeah. <laughs> if you default yeah. on a payday loan, don't pay it. It will not screw over yeah. your credit. It will, like, you might get a lot of calls from debt collectors and people trying to like threaten you and blah 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 just just like ask them if they report to the credit bureau and they're like um uh, um um yeah. real quick in a hurry they do not report to the credit bureau so if you take out a payday loan you do not have to pay it back it's not like other types of loans or debts where that will ruin your credit it will yeah. absolutely not but uh, regardless of that don't uh he worked there <laughs> and um so the ladies like typical uh office uh fashion because uh, this guy, because he he was a semi professional, mm -hmm. he they all were all trying to get into WWE. That was the goal, kind of like a lot of people try to get into um, mm -hmm. um, the Major League Baseball, NFL, oh, yeah. NBA, those types of things. They're they they were eventually trying to make their way into WWE, and um, he um, he would do photo shoots. He would do certain things like he would carb out one day. And then just not mm -hmm. drink any liquids mm -hmm. to make his veins stick yep. out yep, so yep, yep. much for uh, um, when he was going to do a photo shoot. Most of the time what he ate was uh, brown rice, oh, um, either skinless chicken or a can of tuna with sriracha sauce to give it some flavor. And that's what he would eat most of the time. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And he had everything yeah. weighed out and measured perfectly. And all of the ladies who were all trying to lose weight would like, oh, but what are you about this? What about that? And he would give out some things. He's like, but I do this for wrestling. And he yeah. would, and there yeah. was a gym right across the street in the other building, which is funny. Um, not to give out too much information, but um, the building I used to work in was right next to the building for Wizards of the Coast. Jeez. Yeah, so I would go into the yeah. building for Wizards of the Coast nearly every single day to get lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a lot of friends who work for WotC, and yeah. so we would always be yeah. in there. And sometimes they'd be holding big events for, like, uh, Magic the Gathering or different D&D &D events, and mm -hmm. you could sit and watch in some of those things and, and stuff. But um, they also had a gym that was for the WotC nerds. Surprise, it wasn't used very much, and so they let other people <laughs> use it. <laughs> So he would just go in and use their their gym, and they would just let him. He's like, whatever. Finally, someone's using our gym. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that's funny. And um, yeah, so he had this whole regime, like this whole regiment, excuse me, um, of how he would do um, his dieting and stuff. But yeah. there was one day he was carb loading before a big event, mm -hmm. and that motherfucker ate an entire extra large pizza by himself I in a single it. sitting there, we yeah. all sat there and just watched him eat an entire pizza there's like <laughs> images of like the rock like sitting in front of like three full extra large pizzas yeah. just like yeah i'm gonna eat this it's time to party like yeah yeah before like certain events when you, you when you try to when mm -hmm. you're trying to carve up mm -hmm. there's certain things like yeah and it's usually for photo shoots and stuff yeah um Chance says, uh, what was lunch, uh, was Luchador guy a Virgo? What you're going to say about Virgos? <laughs> you're also a Virgo? Yes. Yes. Our, our chat is yes. filled with Virgos. Yes. And Ken's yes, moon is in Virgo. So I'm feeling a I little. I guess I'm honorary then? I'm feeling a little out of, uh, out of, um, <laughs> like in the minority in Taurus season. It's Taurus Ooh, season, my little flag. Yay. You know, I'm feeling really good about, like, this, this professional boxer, um, uh, octopus. This is, uh, this, this is a great little arena. What's, you know, I, I love just the sporting events. I love the world that we're creating with with all these critters here. Yeah. <laughs> Ken, are you ready for the next I'm one? I'm ready. Let's do it. Ken, this is one that you came up with. Oh. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Bigfoot. <gasps> Bigfoot culture. Heck yes. Or you mean big feet. Big feet. Excuse me. In, in big feet culture... <laughs> <laughs> are shoes a thing? Or are shoes a big fucking deal? Oh, damn. Are, are, um, are like shoes kind of like, and, and things that you would wear on your feet kind of like the new currency? Like, it's kind of like your fashion about like people would wear certain things like around their neck that's all about their feet because they've got big feet. I mean, maybe. Is it big feet fashion? 
I to wear those stilettos. You know, I I don't like feet myself personally, so I I can't tell you. Um, uh, geez, oh, you put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> I I have a very different picture in my head. Okay, uh, all right. Of, of what Bigfoot society will be um, kind of gravitating around. Uh, we got Shanna saying Bigfoot would uh, be probably be a cool race to run the world. I mean, Harry was pretty cool. Harry and the Hendersons. Heck yeah, I grew up watching that too. I never watched that one. It, uh, there, there were some movies made and they, like there was a sitcom, I believe. Uh, but yeah, it's it basically like kind of similar premise to Alf except what if Bigfoot? Um, Dang. Yeah. I think I remember seeing pictures of it. Was it unlike Fox? Oh, I couldn't tell you what network uh, aired it. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, but it, it was entertaining. Would there be sports centered around feet? Like, I mean, like football? soccer or football would be yeah. a really big deal? Yes, like, like the actual football. Like, not, not American football, actual football. So, yeah, the football slash soccer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I I have come to terms with the American wording for it, and I'll just say soccer slash football. Yeah. Because Americans get weird about their football. Yeah, yeah, they do. It is a very weird blue-collar sport that a lot of people get really, a like... A lot of people. Huh? A lot of people, yeah. God, okay. So here's a funny story. Um, I, my ex's parents, um, they, they were super, super, super into football. And anytime I would go over there, like for dinners or anything, they usually have the the game on. They usually play the, play the game. The game. And, um, like I remember one time, um, I was there and one of their grandchildren, was like, hey, Grandma and Grandpa, why isn't the game on? Oh, well, we're not watching the game for a little bit. We don't really agree with the things that they're doing. They're making it very political. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Right, right about the time that uh, Colin Kaepernick was, was uh, still famous. Yep. And Jeez. I totally got in their face about it. And I said, how is standing up for your human rights political? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they quickly tried to change the subject, and mm-hmm. I was like, no, really, how are you standing up for your basic human rights political? Yeah. And, well, we're just not watching it right now, okay? Yeah. And then we're just like, well, at least we don't have to deal uh, with that being in the background while forcefully socializing in awkward, dumb yeah. situations with boomers who are judging your every single move. Is this a yeah. Bigfoot Java? I what? What? How how could you say that this is a Bigfoot Java when I, a Pacific Northwest native, <laughs> uh, uh, could could walk fifteen minutes down the street and get a coffee from one? Bigfoot Java's good. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Have you ever been to a Bigfoot Java? Yeah, we've gone. Yeah. It's been a more. It's been a minute. Yeah, like the last time I went was pre-COVID. Um, so for those who don't know, yeah, um, in the here in the Pacific Northwest, there is a chain of locally owned coffee places called Bigfoot Java, mm-hmm. and yes, there is one very close to our house, and they have like the legendary coffee. The like they go into the whole Bigfoot theme, like since yeah. Bigfoot's a big like Pacific Northwest thing, anyways. Yeah. Like they lean into the whole like. Bigfoot like myth into their their little coffee shop and they're pretty good. You know, I used to always get a um um an Irish cream mocha from them and it tasted like malted milk. Okay. Like it was really, really good, the ones that they made because there's sometimes when you get like a latte from a coffee shop where it just tastes like sugar water. But there they actually put like the cream into it and mm, like I said, it tasted like a malted milk. It was really, really good. That's awesome. I used to go there all the time when I was used to live uh, in a different town, all, still in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and there was one, like, 
I would drive by, past it all the time. I'm like, I'm gonna give myself a motherfucking giant ass coffee. And my only my only complaint about Bigfoot Java is that they don't really serve food there. Yeah. That would be my only complaint. Because Starbucks, mm, they've got all sorts of goodies that make me, make, that make me choose them before <laughs> Bigfoot Java. Judge yeah. me all you want. It's another Pacific Northwest company. It's so yeah. local. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my god, the man bun. Yep, hipster. Got, I, I have to have a hipster getting their coffee. Yes, this is beautiful. Oh, this is peak society. Oh, I love this. Um, I'll go back to the chat real quick. Um, I think Bigfoot would be into petties. Yes, definitely their petties. Not so much their manies, but definitely their petties. Um, we also got um, Shanna saying Bigfoot Java is so good. Chan says, God, the Seahawks did something a while ago, or maybe it was the knee thing, and my mom said she was done with them and had to get rid of her paraphernalia. Oh, <laughs> I mean, okay. You're, you're only hurting the industry that you like. Yeah. All right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously. Um, and like, it doesn't even matter after that because you've already bought all the merchandise. They already got your money. Right. Why do they care if you burn their stuff after the fact? What's so funny to me is the people who will like try to protest it by burning it and they don't have yeah. it. So they yeah. go out and buy the thing yeah. to give them money and then they'll burn it. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Freaking exactly. Like, okay. I said this before, just between me and Ken, but to share with all of you, um, I've said it before. It's like, in a time when there were, like, limited copies of things. Yeah. When you had, like, the printing press. And even pre press, printing press. Even more so. But even just the times of the, the early beginnings times of the printing press, it was hard to reproduce. Because you still had to, like lay everything out you still had to like mark everything like it still took time to to print a book even if it was easier than it was writing everything by hand which absolutely of course but uh in those times you'd have limited copies of books so to burn a book or to burn a thing had more of a message because there were only so many copies in the world nowadays holy fucking shit if something needs a third, fourth, twelfth printing, it happens just like that. Yeah, Everything's yeah, digital. You yeah. can download the fucking copy. It really doesn't fucking matter. And like, but it's the, the principle of the thing. It's the symbolism. Okay, but what are you trying to say? That you're burning yeah, it? Yeah. But how did you get the copy of that to yeah, begin exactly. with? You had to buy a copy. So yeah. you're still supporting the creative team that made said thing. The mm -hmm. author, the artist, uh, the, the, the publisher, everybody. You're still giving them the money yeah. to yeah. buy the thing to burn it. Which means nothing anymore. It means absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. It just makes me laugh. It makes me really really laugh um mm -hmm. we've got uh <laughs> shanna saying the abominable or, or ad abominable abominable yeah. white mocha is my personal fave Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh. Ooh. you know i let's I do might, that tomorrow. i might have to try let's do it yeah yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's set them up because like i every time we go to like starbucks i always get the um the grande white chocolate mocha latte like, that sounds like it'd be right up my, my alley. Chance wants to know if this is the Sublime poster from earlier. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> that, that is the patch on the back of this, this jean jacket that this Yeti, er, uh, Bigfoot, is wearing. Excuse me. Can I ask you a dumb question? Go for it. Black Hole Sun. Who wrote that song? Uh, that is a Soundgarden song, oh. to my knowledge. Yes. Because I see the sound, I'm like thinking, Black Hole Sun, Gosh. won't you come? My mom hated that song because of the music video. Because they had a barbecue with a uh, um, with a Barbie doll on it, and like it freaked her out. Like, oh yeah, the whole the like the, the story that the music video is telling is talking about like a cult. So yeah, of course it's gonna freak you out. But I mean, she would know uh, she's a part of a cult. <laughs> Hot take. Hot take. I think this would have been a better one to end on, but I like it anyways, and so let's do it. Let's go for it, yeah. So the next Who one, knows? are you ready? I mean, we've got 20 minutes. It might I, I might take my time on this one. Who knows? What's up? Uh, no, uh, Ch uh, Ch Shanna's saying that, is, uh, that one is Soundgarden. Yeah, yeah, it is Soundgarden. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, why did I say Muse? Oh, because they're talking about the chat. So they're thinking it was oh, Muse. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, this one is Twinkies. Twinkies? <laughs> All right. What are yes. Twinkies? Because they've got so many preservatives, <laughs> clearly the, the nuclear apocalypse mutates them into a sentient being. Um, the the, the yes. new species that will take over the earth, Twinkies. Yes. And I love other it. preservative foods. I love it. What is your favorite highly preserved food? Ken and Chad. Oh, my favorite. You're, you're like, you know think. it's bad. Like, a Twinkie um, is bad. Like, what is. You know it's just nothing but preservatives and sugar and high fructose corn syrup, but you still love it anyways. What is your guilty pleasure, highly processed food? <laughs> Oreos. Oreos, okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't had Oreos in forever. Um, you know, we had Hot Pockets before we started. Oh my gosh, yes. We bought Hot Pockets today. I'm <laughs> so happy that we did. <laughs> I ate a lot of Hot Pockets. Um, Same. Although, I would have to say my favorite, cup of noodles. Ooh. Cup That's of noodles. Good. That's good. I mean, they're highly processed. It's mostly just sodium. <laughs> you, they're not good for you. <laughs> Although the creator of Cup of Noodles had really good intentions. Like, he wanted to create something yeah. that was very nutritious because he saw a lot of people starving in Japan um, right after World War II. And so he um, he created um, Cup of Noodles um, to be something nutritious. But it's where it is now. It's, it's, it's very highly processed. <laughs> It's yeah. mostly just salt, but it's such a guilty pleasure. Like, I my mom would buy uh, the giant pack of them at Costco, and that was Stephanie food. Like, I ate that all throughout high school and college in my early 20s, and still to this day. <laughs> I eat a lot, a lot of cup of noodles, they, and I was teaching my nephew the love of cup of noodles because um, <laughs> they're, they're good. They're, they're very good. Yeah. And you can add all sorts of other shit to it if you're feeling fancy. Yeah, why not? Yeah. There's uh, one YouTuber I really love. Mm -hmm. His name is Isabitaru. Oh, oh gosh, yes, yes. And we he's had a few time. different YouTube videos. He's a Japanese guy. Mm -hmm. And he, he does a lot of videos talking about just different, like, just trinkets. Just Japanese trinkets. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and the, he has a few different um, episodes that are all dedicated to just ramen. And he'll buy, like, special things featuring different ramen cups and stuff. Like, like uh, mm -hmm. collectibles, souvenirs, special, like, chopsticks, special bags, special napkins. All of the shit. Just all about these things. He bought, like, a, a, a cup of noodle um, dispenser. Oh, geez, and so yeah. you put like your yen into it and it would dispense it and then it would put it's like hot water into it count the time for you and tell you when your cup of noodle was absolutely perfect and they had special timers that were made by um the uh, cup of noodle companies and um they would sing a little song and do a little dance while the whole entire thing until your cup of noodle was ready one was like a happy birthday song um, but it was it's very cute. Isabe Taru? Yes. Isabe Taru. Yes, that sounds right. Uh, it's who he is on YouTube. Instagram. E I S E E T A B R O U, I believe is how you spell his uh, YouTube uh, name. He's also on Instagram. He's a really good, uh, really good uh, mm -hmm. page. I really like him. Yeah. I also love this bean Twinkie that you have drawn. <laughs> He's got a bean body. Yes. This is a really good Twinkie. Um, uh, we got a chance saying, oh, remember when they said uh, they weren't going to make Twinkies anymore? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember that, actually. There was a time when they said they were going to stop making Twinkies. Hostess wasn't doing so great. Uh, so they're like, yeah, we have to discontinue Twinkies because no one's fucking buying them. Uh, and then everybody started buying them because they wanted to protect Twinkies. <laughs> and it um, made it last. Um, it had its ups and downs because ultimately they did get to a point where they, they Hostess did shut down their doors. Um, but I think another company <laughs> like kind of came in and, and saved them and just does it as like a like a passion project uh anymore. really yeah yeah weird hostess they they're they're not as popular a company as they once were 
But, yeah. Well, because their stuff is garbage. It's terrible. When you're making uh, trash, yeah, like right. literal trash, <laughs> mm-hmm. why would you be surprised that no one wants to eat your trash? I mean, <coughs> fair? <laughs> Great time to take a drink of water. I know that feeling, quite frankly. Sorry, my, my throat was oh, getting no, itchy. You're, you're all good. Yeah, let's let's square this this lad up just a little bit. Uh, go back to the chat. Um, those yellow cakes with the white swirls on them. I don't remember those. I remember the chocolate ones with the white swirls. <sighs> yellow uh, ho hos. Yeah, the ho hos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the ding dongs. Um, my, so, um, my Oma, my mother's mother, my, my, she's my German grandma, my Oma, uh, uh, Oma is used in a lot of different countries in Europe, Armenian grandma. Mm -hmm. Um, but my Oma, she would, um, she would buy me, um, the Debbie, what's the, the company Debbie? Oh, um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, the Debbie cakes. (sighs) I know the name, but it's on It's Debbie it. yeah. something. Yeah. And um, uh, Debbie Bakewell, we'll say. I, I I know what you're talking about. But they would make um, like this this candy yeah. that's chocolate wafers with peanut butter in them. Holy yeah. fucking yeah. shit! Those things were little good. Debbies. Little Debbie. Little Debbies. Yes. Little Debbie. Okay. And yeah, now no, Shannon just said Little Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, they made these like, and they were fucking giants. For a little kid, mm-hmm. and two of them came in a single package, and yeah. Um, but they yeah I forget what they were called but they were chocolate and they were wafer and they were peanut butter which is pretty much everything that Europeans love but minus the peanut butter um, but like the chocolate and the wafer and mm-hmm. my Oma would buy that shit for us and nice. we're always like so um, about um, dessert um. <laughs> do, you, do you have do you have the goods? <laughs> And she would give us one of these, and there were two of them, and there was, it was sometimes more than what we could eat, but we would still eat them anyways, and oh, mm-hmm. those were good. I, ha- I had a very soft spot in my heart for those little Debbie, uh, uh, but um, I didn't eat Twinkies very much growing up. Um, I had Ho-Hos and Ding Dongs very occasionally, because I grew up with weird German sweets. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't grow up with a lot of American sweets. Oh, I one of, one of the, the Hostess products that I had regularly was uh, lemon zingers, which was basically just um, it was a Twinkie, but it had like the the um, like a a lemon icing fondant kind of top to it. That actually sounds pretty good. It actually was really good. I fucking loved them. Those uh, those don't sound half bad. They were not. Yeah. Yeah. They were very good. Um, go back to the chat real quick. Um, we got Shanna saying the chocolate ones, but can't have those because allergic. Yeah. Um, they make chocolate and yellow cake ones. The hostess makes them too. Um, yeah, I think that's what Ken was talking about with the, the lemon zingers. Mm-hmm. That that doesn't sound half bad. It was good. I really liked it. Um, but no, I mean like the the desserts that they made were not that good. I mean they were okay, but like. They were simplistic at best. Yeah. And the Twinkies, like, again, I I grew up with weird German sweeties. And, and like, we would go to, like, the German import stores in my local area or, like, other import stores. And we would get, like, Mm -hmm. stuff imported in over from our family in in Germany. And so I, I grew up with weird things. I will fully, fully admit that. And so a lot of American sweets, like, I, it took me a long time to even try ger- American potato salad because it looked gross to me. <laughs> yeah. Have I told you that story? You have, that it looked like it spoiled. Yeah, so let me tell the story real quick yeah. uh, for those who don't know. So when I was a little kid, um, so in different parts of Germany, pretty much every little region has a different version of potato salad, Kartoffelsalats. Um and in my my family's area of Germany, how they did their kartoffelsalat was uh, yellow potatoes, um, 
My Oma used sunflower oil just because my Opa um, grew up in what is considered modern day Ukraine. He is not Ukrainian. Um, he is German from the Black Forest and immigrated into the Ukraine and lived there for a short while. But and then he went moved elsewhere afterwards because of the war and shit. Which is so gnarly, if, if I may interject. Yeah. Uh, just because I love this part of the story. Just that, like, he speaks a dialect of, of German that was popular in the Black Forest yeah. in, like, the 1800s. Yep. Like, he speaks a 200-year-old dialect of German. Yeah. And that is absolutely amazing to me, just from a historical standpoint. Like, yeah. I love that part of that story. When I've told people... So, I've talked to other Germans before in the past, and I'm like... I'm sorry, um, my Deutsch is really bad. I, I speak a really weird dialect, like things I learned from my Opa and my yeah. Oma is uh, from um, Rottenburg on the Tauba, which is actually a, like a destination point now. It's a very touristy city. Because when you think of like the, when you think of Bavaria, mm -hmm. the most Bavarian of Bavarian cities, yeah. Yeah. it's uh, Rottenburg. Yeah. And it's like the, um, the Viking tours um, mm -hmm. go through there. Um, there's all these different places. Like, it's a tourist trap now where my Oma grew up, and it's kind of wild to think about. But um, uh, she she speaks Bayerisch, which is a southern dialect of German. And, again, from just that time, oh, my Opa speaks different because it came out of the Black Forest, and then they kind of were this weird little hub that they stayed in their little small community uh, in what is considered modern day Ukraine. Uh, I know that there's a lot of news going around the Ukraine. Um, and um, right after, well, it was, it was a little before World War II, uh, Catherine the Great, um, she, she, like, of Russia uh, at the time, Ukraine was still under Russian control, and uh, she decided to um, give away land from the Ukraine. Uh, to anybody and everybody who wanted to come by and claim it. Um, so if you were wanted land, if you wanted like farmland, just go to Ukraine and Catherine would great would great would give it to you. But it was Ukrainian land, yeah. and um, there's a lot of history and a lot of things I can say. And um, I don't want to bum anybody out tonight, but um, that's how my opa ended up in Ukraine. So I was talking about kartoffels a lot. Yes. <laughs> Uh, in my mom's or my oma's potato salad, she used um, sunflower seed oil because sunflower seed oil was very, very important to them. They grew a lot of sunflowers. For those who have been paying attention to uh, news about the Ukraine, you would see how sunflowers are very, very important to the Ukrainian people. And so um, I still actually use a lot of sunflower seed oil in my co own cooking because of my opa, because he, he lived in the Ukraine. Again, he wasn't Ukrainian, he lived in the Ukraine, and he did grow up with that. So my mo my oma's potato salad is uh, yellow potatoes, sunflower seed oil, um, German seasoned um, vinegar, which is, is, is different. You can get a lot of import stories, yeah. and then salt and pepper and green onions that's that's her but so i grew up on that and so american potato salad with all the mayo and other things uh, when i was a little girl i would go through a grocery store and i thought they had this big bowl of potato yeah. salad and i thought it had spoiled because <laughs> it yeah. was all yeah. white and i was like ew that looks disgusting why would they sell that <laughs> and it didn't take me until I was a fucking adult to finally, finally try American potato salad. And it's not bad. It's good. I like American potato salad. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely different. The ones that have I like a little it. bit of mustard and uh, hard boiled <laughs> eggs. Mm, that's really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we're talking about Twinkies. Like, how we the fuck did I start talking about potato salad? Oh, yeah. That's an excellent question. Oh, boy, sentience. <laughs> Coming out of the nuclear wasteland. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, there was a long time, like, uh, in the 80s where this is the mm -hmm. future that they saw. Right. While their parents saw the future in, like, space age technology. We'd have flying cars. Yeah. We would have flying space age. We would be living on the moon and Mars mm -hmm. at this point and had flying cars and shit and be x-ray beam technology. And um, then in the 80s, they're like, no, everything's fucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But again, I, at the beginning of, of our stream, and I want to reiterate again, uh, um, this last Earth Day, which is what inspired tonight's stream, is that um, I've seen so much change happening oh, yeah. and very positive yeah. change. The biggest one coming with the coral reef. Yeah. There were pictures I saw where it's like from just like five years ago versus where we are today. People who are mm -hmm. actually dedicated. They're like, no, we're going to bring the coral reef back. Yeah. And guess what? It's happening. It's happening. It's happening, people. It's actually happening. Like they, they are people who said the coral reef is dead. There's no way we can bring it back. We're <laughs> fucked. Everything is just doomed. Yeah. yeah. And, and we are able to restore things. Um, the ozone layer, like we said at the mm -hmm. beginning. It's fucking... People don't talk about the ozone layer because guess what? Yeah. We fucking fixed it. Mm -hmm. Humans are not as doomed as some people say they are. And it just really... T all it takes is people giving a flying fuck to yeah. actually want to make things better. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I want to reiterate uh, the company that I really, really love. It's called uh, Four Ocean. Um, again, the number Four Ocean. Please check them out. Uh, buy a, a bracelet. Buy a necklace from them. Help them so that they can actually take some trash out of the ocean. Yeah. Um, and, and look at their social media accounts because they actually show you how they are actually doing it themselves. They're not paying yeah. some other company. They're not like doing all this offshore account, like CEOs making money on the side. No, these are people who actually care about the health and the well-being of the ocean and they yeah. want to see things get better. Yeah. And I absolutely adore this company for that. So definitely check them out uh, for Ocean. Um, again, buy a bracelet, buy a necklace, buy a reusable yeah. water bottle. A little bit goes a long ways. And they're trying to tackle the... Because um, there right now there is a, um, a giant island of trash. I, that's been around for quite a while. The size of Texas. That is. Oh, it got bigger. Okay. That is floating around in the middle of the ocean. Trash Island has been a thing for at least as long as I've been alive. And the thing is, is that that can go away. Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely can. And Four Ocean and so many other companies are trying to work together to slowly but surely. Uh, Four Ocean mostly focuses yeah. on beaches, and they are trying to go more into like different areas. Um, but for especially for a lot of like um, third world nations where they can't afford. Yeah to fucking clean their oceans and they just end up with like the world's trash yeah that's not at their fair. front door and a lot of those people live off of like the sea life like yeah. that's where how they build their livelihood is from life from the ocean yeah. and so companies like four ocean come through help clean up their shores help clean up the ocean yeah. so they can go back to living their normal lives without having to deal with the repercussions of other things yeah i love this last picture that you drew it's really Thank funny you. but i also <laughs> wanted to say just as like please when people actually give a shit yeah we can fix things we absolutely can we fix the ozone layer we have fixed the coral reef we can undo a lot of the damage that has been done it's not as doom and gloom as yeah. people may think it is but all it takes is people giving a shit yeah. so unless you want twinkies or capybaras or any of the other animals or species I mean. to take over the earth and become the dominant species um, please start giving a damn and please do what you can. And, and, and I know the biggest problem isn't individual humans. And I, I'm not trying to guilt shame you into like, stop using straws and non-renewables. Yeah. No, use your paper towels if they use them, they provide them for you in a public towel, like in a public restroom. Yeah. Please don't let, it's the big companies. And it's by shaming pu public companies mm -hmm. that how we get them to stop. Yeah. From all sorts of different things that public companies do. We have, com uh, we have places like Twitter where you can publicly shame these companies yeah. for doing this shit. We have a lot more voice than we did just like even five years ago, five twenty or five ten years ago. So use your voice, use your ability to communicate and shame these companies, and ask for better and yeah. do better because uh, fuck those greedy assholes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and as much as I'm hoping for Twinkie sentience, you know, I think we can I think we can do a little bit more before we get to that point. I think I think I have a very important question. 
Would I be a criminal in their society as a human being going around and like subsisting on the flesh of these sentient Twinkies? Like, would I would I be like a criminal or would I be like the basis of their vampire mythos after that? Like, there is a movie. There's a couple movies about that actually, where it's really? like vampires have taken over the world. Oh, oh. Well, I mean, like, like as a human being, like, like would I create yeah. their? Oh yeah, humans gosh. like trying to fight the de- um, the the uh, vampires that have taken over the world, and they're considered the bad guy. Uh, Will Smith is one of them. Uh, With a dog. I am Legend. Yeah. No. Well, that, that, those were like. They they were like like hive mind zombie kind of creatures. Like Will Smith was not considered. He he was still human. Like yeah, and uh, he was an asshole because uh, wow. he wasn't trying to feed off of them, but he was still trying to fight them, and he was still trying to make like fix humans. And at a certain point, he had to realize that he was the problem. No, that that, that wasn't how the movie was set up. Like the the Will Smith. One, I don't know if maybe the Vincent Price one was set up that way, but. Um, the, the Will Smith one was set up to be like, oh, he's trying to find a cure for this weird zombieism yeah. uh, kind of thing. Like, yeah. they didn't have sentience. They didn't have that kind of mindset of, like, being humans. You do not remember the movie because I, there was a female? There was, and she was trying to protect, like, a, a, her child or her mate or spouse. And showing sentience. Yes, that was part yes. of it. But, like... He was still trying to to save humanity. It was it was like they they were trying to go for like a um like like he he was still trying to survive. Um, gosh, why am I spacing on like this terminology? Because they like the grass is always greener on the other side, kind of thing. Like yes, he was preventing their society from growing, as it were, uh, when they were very newly developed. But um, like he was still trying to save humanity like but there were no uh, more humans left to save there were he did save a human being he sacrificed himself to save another oh, human being oh there you yes. are thinking of the theatrical cuts oh. i'm thinking of the director's cuts okay uh, that's okay that's the difference all right we saw we saw two different versions the theatrical of the cut yes there was a human at the very end in the uh, director's cut, there wasn't. Okay. And I in, never in saw the, the director's, director's cut, cut, he was made out to be the bad guy. Okay. That he was basically holding them back. And that was with the story they wanted to tell, but it didn't do well in test audiences. Gotcha. Well, I mean, yeah, that that's not okay. Well, All it's right. been a well, hot second yeah, since we've watched it. Yeah, so, yeah, right. Kenji, okay. it's a little bit after 10. It is. But and I've been having so much fun with this. We've been having so much fun tonight. Thank you all <laughs> so much for joining us live. Thank you so much for watching afterwards. We appreciate so much of your energy and everything you contributed to the, the comments and just everything. Thank yeah. you so much for watching. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much for listening. Uh, next week, we've got some ideas already planned. We have a couple, yeah. And... Um, we stream every single Saturday night mm-hmm. at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Jam and Jabber. We have some other projects in mind for other things that we would like to do, but we're always open for suggestions yeah, of things that you would think would either be good for a stream, things you would think would be good for a series. We're still pretty green when it comes to uh, video editing, <laughs> which is what's stopping us from doing we're, other types of videos. We're very live right now. <laughs> <laughs> and and doing things live is a little bit easier because you're like whatever we're going yeah. live we're just doing it but uh um for for other things that you would have suggestions for we're still open we still like to do that in the future so anything you have suggestion wise feel free to leave it in the chat feel free to message us our social medias are on our pages feel free we are totally open for those things and because we'd love to create content that you would love to enjoy to watch we really appreciate everything that you bring again thank you so 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 yeah. much for watching yeah thank you we will catch you next week it's been a blast i have enjoyed drawing all of these silly doodles for y'all um quick question yeah i know you're ready to be like okay we're done <laughs> what was your favorite one for tonight oh, same geez. thing with chat what was your favorite drawing oh, we did tonight i'm trying i'm trying to do that uh <laughs> even if we go a little bit later what okay. people think were their favorite drawings. Okay. Uh, if people in the chat, if you are still here watching Let's us, see. what do you think was your, or what, what do you, what was your favorite drawing for tonight? Mine's the yes. copies. Okay. It's the dodos for me. I really dodos like for you? One. Yeah. Dodos yeah. were great. Which one was copies? That, oh, the, gosh, the cats. That was good. 
Uh, Bigfoot. We got to vote for Bigfoot. Bigfoot was great. Bigfoot was very solid. I like the Bigfoot one, too. That was really good. Copies um, are good, yeah. I always like to hear what people think with our yeah. favorites. Because uh, I'd love to do uh, stream highlights. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> that requires spoons to do stream highlights. Aww. Uh, I understand. I understand. But thank you all yeah. so much. We really Thanks appreciate y'all. And uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, same time, same place, same channel. Heck yeah. Thank you 